Hello and welcome back to Switch and Lever. When marking lines for woodworking, it's often better to use a knife instead of a pencil, as you get a nice crisp line in the wood into which you can easily register your chisel or saw. A marking knife is also a fun little project to make, which doesn't require much material and doesn't require you to be an expert at knife grinding. The blade for this marking knife will be made from an old plane blade. I picked up a couple of old blades from a flea market not too long ago, and they're made by old and renowned Swedish toolmaker E.A. Berg, so you know the steel in these is top notch and will work great for making a knife blade. We start by cutting out a blank from the plane blade using a cutoff disc and an angle grinder. The blade is hardened, so you can't just take a hacksaw to it, but you need something a bit more powerful. Because it is hardened, we won't really be able to work with it easily, and as you can see a file won't even really bite into it. Luckily, it is fairly easy to anneal the steel to soften it up. Grab a torch and heat up the steel until it loses its magnetic properties. This heating changes the crystalline structure of the steel from martensite to austenite, and allowing it to cool down slowly in room temperature makes sure that it stays soft enough to be worked with regular metalworking tools. Clean up the blank. Coat it with layout fluid or just sharpie and scribe layout lines for the design of your knife blade. At this point there is no worry about ruining any temper the blade has, and we can go at it and grind away the bulk of the material that we don't need. If you don't have access to a grinder, you can do all the work I'm doing here with a set of files, from coarse to fine but power tools definitely speeds up the process. Even so, it's a good idea to break out the files and fine-tune your design up to the lines. Once you have the general profile of the blade done, you can set up your grinder or belt sander at an angle and start grinding the bevels of the blade. Take it slow and work evenly until you get a nice and clean point on your blade. A light sanding will clean up the rest of the blade. So now we have a sharp but quite soft blade, so it's time to put back some of that hardness we took out before. Like before, start heating up the blade until it glows faintly red and loses all magnetism. Instead of letting it air cool, this time around dunk it in a can of oil to cool and harden it, locking the crystalline structure back to martensite again. I use a raw linseed oil for the quenching, but you can use a wide variety of oils for this, though I would recommend staying away from synthetic oils like old motor oil at the very least. After quenching the blade is very hard, almost glass-like, and dropping it on a hard surface could even break it. Of course we can't really have a brittle blade in a working tool, so we need to soften it up. Just drop the blade into an oven set at around 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit and leave it inside for about an hour. Take the blade out and allow it to fully cool down in room temperature before repeating this process once or twice again. This tempers the blade, making it hard and tough rather than brittle and therefore suitable for our marking knife. From this point on we want to be very careful about heating the blade up again, as it will possibly anneal the blade back to its soft state again. Quenching likely produced some scale on the blade though, but you can easily clean that up with sandpaper or something like this scotch Brite contraption I fit into the lathe. Either way, the blade is done, so let's move on to the handle. I got some beautiful spalted birch from a friend, and I couldn't resist trying to make a handle from it. Spalting is technically wood rotting, and it can leave the wood quite soft and not very structurally sound. But on the other hand, it creates some absolutely beautiful patterning. It is however really difficult to fit a square piece of wood into a three-jaw lathe chuck. You could definitely set up a dog and turn between centers, but in the end it's just much easier to glue a round dowel at one end to clamp into the chuck. To make it easier to turn, it may also be a good idea to remove some bulk of material before even fitting it into the lathe. 
Now, I mentioned that spalting can leave the wood quite soft, and this is exactly what happened here. It was a very difficult piece of wood to turn, and really wanted to tear and chip out chunks of the wood rather than cutting it. Therefore the handle didn't come out fully as I intended, but it still is a decently functional handle in the end. If you didn't do it already in the lathe, drill a hole in the end of the handle to accept the tang of the blade to be fitted. Then it's just a matter of cutting off the end and sanding it down to finish the shaping of the handle. If we just tap the blade in now, we will no doubt split the handle apart. So we're going to fit a small brass band, a ferrule, at the end of the handle, holding it all together. Instead of just fitting a round piece of pipe onto the handle, I wanted to put a small lip in one end, trying my hand at what's called metal spinning, in which you deform metal in a lathe using tools and oil for lubrication. This method is and has been used extensively for making a wide variety of items, anything from candlesticks to cymbals to hubcaps and much much more. Here I'm just using a rounded rod fitted into the lathe tool post to nudge the edge of the brass pipe over until it rolls in slightly on itself, creating the lip that I'm after. The finished ferrule should fit snug onto the handle, but should not require any heavy hammer blows to seat into place. Same thing with the blade. Firm tapping with the back of your hand against the back of the handle should be more than enough to drive the tang of the blade down into place. Almost there now. Since the wood in this handle is fairly soft, I decided to go with a varnish instead of an oiling of the handle, in the hope that some varnish would soak in and offer a little harder surface to the handle than the oil would provide. I simply taped off the ferrule and gave the handle a few good coats with a clear and hard wearing varnish. One last step once the varnish is dry, and that is to sharpen the knife. The bevels we established before are a little too aggressive, and for a longer wearing edge should be sharpened down a little. A few strokes on a water stone on each side is more than enough, and can be easily touched up should the knife lose its edge in the future. The proof is in the pudding, as they say, or in this case on the walnut. The marking knife, perhaps unsurprisingly, does mark wood rather well. I hope you enjoyed this remarkable video. Make sure you check out one of the other knife making videos on this channel. There is a small collection of them by now. Remember to subscribe if you like what you see, and click that Instagram link for more regular updates. Until next time!